Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new updates from the outskirts of the solar system. Some in regards to the New Horizons mission, and some in regards to what the scientists discovered here not so long ago, potentially redefining our understanding of what the solar system is like. But I guess first, a bit of a good news. NASA officially confirmed that the New Horizons mission is going to extend its operations, specifically focusing on planetary studies, all the way to 2029. And this is of course great, because a few months ago, at first it wasn't clear if this mission might actually be over, or might potentially be changed into a solar-based mission, essentially studying the Sun. But it looks like NASA got convinced to continue this as a planetary mission, exploring the rest of the Kuiper Belt. It of course made no sense to finish this mission early, especially because this is the only mission we have so far away from the Sun, with a very powerful camera, able to capture a lot of different images of different objects from angles that would be otherwise unavailable to us. And so for as long as the New Horizons mission is still inside the Kuiper Belt, it's going to remain active. But by 2029, it's expected to leave this area, reaching the mysterious Oort Cloud. But interestingly, because there's still some fuel left on the craft, it's still able to change its course for a potential intersect with something else. And so in the last few months, various teams of scientists have been actively trying to discover another potential trans-Neptunian object, similar to Arakoth, that was explored back in 2019. And so by tracing the trajectory, and by essentially looking ahead where it's headed in the next few years, teams of scientists using powerful telescopes on the planet have been trying to find other large objects that can serve as another flyby. But many of these objects are barely visible. Most of them are expected to be a few kilometers across, but are barely producing any light at all. And so in order to see if there's anything here, scientists have been using a lot of more advanced techniques, such as one known as shift stacking. Basically stacking several images all at once, in order to magnify any kind of light that could be somewhere in the image. But one of the recent studies also used machine learning techniques to try to discover anything at a distance of 60 to 80 AU from the center of the solar system. And intriguingly, they seem to have discovered 12 different objects, at least preliminary. 12 potentially massive objects, anywhere from 60 to possibly 80 AU away from the Sun, that, if confirmed, could maybe, could potentially be explored by the New Horizons. Although, if these objects are confirmed, this is a much bigger deal for a lot of other reasons. It basically suggests that there are a lot of different objects on the outskirts of the solar system, and the entire solar system could be actually much more massive than we originally thought. Ironically, this would also solve one of the mysteries of New Horizons. When the mission was collecting data, it was actually a bit surprising that it seemed to be bombarded by a large amount of dust coming from somewhere. And this dust should not be here, mostly because the probe is already really far away from everything. However, a presence of another asteroid belt farther away from the Sun could be one of the potential explanations to what's actually happening here. Basically right now what this implies is the presence of, I guess, a second Kuiper belt, or another asteroid belt, potentially containing even more asteroids we never knew existed. But more intriguingly, based on preliminary observations, there's also a suggestion that something massive is pulling on them and changing their orbits, and though naturally this could be the mysterious Planet 9, right now the suggestion is that it's a presence of some kind of a large asteroid belt more large objects on the outskirts, possibly forming some kind of an anomaly on the outskirts. And if true, it would also explain the anomalous glow, or extra light, that was detected by the New Horizons and even the Hubble Space Telescope that was impossible to explain before. In this case, this would be the reflection from all of the dust and much smaller particles formed by the belt. And it cannot be the Oort Cloud because that one is much, much farther away. But we also have to be really careful, because so far this is all preliminary. As a matter of fact, similar studies from back in June of 2023 potentially only discovered one object, not 12. And so we don't really know what's going on here just yet, and will very likely take a few months more to either confirm this, or to explain it in some other way. But if confirmed, at least one of these objects could become the next destination for the New Horizons probe. And speaking of its previous destination, so there are some other discoveries from the object you see right here, Arakoth. And specifically, it's based on the analysis of its surface, including looking at various features such as various mounts, and comparing the shape, the size, and the color of both the smaller piece and the larger piece. And while interestingly enough, 
turns out that both pieces are extremely similar. As a matter of fact, all of the mounts or all of the hills on both of the objects surprisingly seem to have very similar properties. And not just similar color or size, but even similar proportions and overall shape. With 12 different mounts discovered, it basically suggests that this entire rock must have been created through a very very slow process of accumulation over time or extremely slow gravitational collapse. And based on the location of this object, basically the outskirts of the solar system, it's probably extremely common for a lot of similar objects. Basically they all just kind of slowly coalesce over time and create a much larger structure. And this one is really big. 35 kilometers in length, 20 kilometers in width. And so based on the size, it is a little bit unusual that many features here seem to be practically the same. It suggests some kind of a universal formation technique that seems to apply to many of these trans-Neptunian objects. Today it's assumed that many of these objects potentially served as a formation of larger planets and many of them are basically planetary remnants, or I guess failed planets. But a much more intriguing comparison is going to come from the Lucy mission that very soon is going to be exploring other asteroids that are much closer to home. It's actually going to be looking at the Jupiter's Trojans, many of which might have similar origins. But exactly what it's going to find here, only time will tell. At the moment, the data from Arakoth presents a bit of a challenge when it comes to the formation model for the entire solar system. Mostly because it's not clear why so many parts of this object seem to have exactly the same features. Same color, same size, same shape. I mean, obviously it suggests a universal formation of some sort, but exactly how all of this works is currently unknown. But if this is how various pieces of various planets were made, we definitely have to try to understand this better. I'm sure we'll find out more in some of the future studies. Okay, I was about to finish the video, but editing Anton here. Turns out that as I was about to press the button, even more discoveries have been made from the outskirts of the solar system that I basically have to cover too, because they are sort of all related. And one of them is from very well-known dwarf planets that we've previously discussed many times. Sedna, Gong Gong, and Kowar. All three observed with the James Webb Space Telescope that used infrared observations to make some unusual discoveries about what's on their surface. And so first of all, these are Kuiper Belt objects, so they're actually really far away from the Sun, but they also have generally different orbits. Also, they're really large. All of them are approximately a thousand kilometers across, and so just a little bit smaller than Pluto, but way, way larger than most asteroids out there. And so here, by using infrared light, it became possible to see certain hydrocarbons and complex organic molecules right on their surface. And these molecules are generally just a result of methane that's already here, interacting with the sun and potentially a lot of other radiation, and forming other volatiles, such as for example acetylene and ethylene. And so quite a lot of these objects, so for example objects like Pluto, will usually contain a lot of these volatiles on their surface. But what makes these three objects kind of unique is of course their orbit. Sedna, along with Gong Gong, have extremely elliptical orbits, approaching the sun relatively close and then moving away from the sun relatively far. So both of these objects spend most of the time far, far away from the sun. Quawar though is a little bit different. Its orbit is more circular. And so its surface gets irradiated a little bit different from everything else. And so based on these orbital differences, with Sedna being the most elliptical and Quawar being the least elliptical or most circular, it became possible to analyze the amount of various organic compounds on the surface of these objects, comparing them to the amount of sunlight they probably receive. And so Sedna contains a huge amount of ethane, and also has a lot of acetylene and ethylene, whereas Gong Gong has a little bit less and Quawar has even less. And that's because a lot of these molecules result from irradiation from the sun, but also things like ethane would usually be converted into more complex molecules if there was more sunlight compared to if there was less sunlight. With Sedna also generally being a lot more reflective than Gong Gong and Quawar, but also generally containing a lot of other stuff, that seems to be absent on the two other objects. But because there are so many of these molecules on the surface, and because they generally come from methane originally, something must also resupply methane to this surface. But also because these objects seem to look a little bit different from a lot of other similar objects, including Pluto and including a lot of other dwarf planets, there is also a suggestion that they might have a very different type of a history. Maybe they came from somewhere else, or maybe they were formed in an entirely different way. So definitely exciting observations, just maybe not a lot of answers yet. 
And last but not least, we have another announcement from the object referred to as 2002 MS4. And here, by observing this asteroid through the process of occultation of various stars, basically when the stars pass in front of the asteroid, with this being done several times from several locations, the team discovered that this asteroid seems to have an extremely large depression, potentially from some kind of an impact, 45 kilometers deep, and also about 320 kilometers across. Now, this asteroid is also probably a dwarf planet, it's about 800 kilometers in width, so it is a very large object, essentially making this an example of one of the largest, or technically the largest craters on the outskirts of the solar system discovered so far, and the first example of a huge crater beyond the orbit of Neptune. Here, the rim of the crater itself seems to be about 25 kilometers in height. That would technically make it the biggest mountain in the solar system, even bigger than Olympus Mons. But what makes this unusual is of course the fact that these collisions were never expected to happen that far away from the Sun. We don't expect these powerful collisions so extremely far away, mostly because objects here move very slowly. And so either this object came from somewhere else entirely, or once again maybe there's something going on here that we just don't understand. I think it's probably that last answer. Anyway, back to you, pre-editing Anton. And well, until these future discoveries, or until future confirmations, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.